Hello and welcome to Sorted Food. Now today we are exploring some food trends to see if they're worth all the hype. And to mix it up, we've each picked a trend for another to review. So you're going to get a real mixture of qualified opinions from chef <laughs> and non-qualified opinions <laughs> from non-chefs. Uh, Ebers, you're up first. This is from me to you. Excellent. May I? Please. Oh, oh, egg in a bag. It's an egg in a bag. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Oh, it's a funny colour. Oh, it's very firm. Oh, interesting. Oh, I'm not sure I've done that very well. He's the qualified one who can't peel an egg. Well, let me put you out of your misery, and all of us out of our misery of watching you terribly peel that egg. This is a salted duck egg. So salted egg yolks is something that's been a delicacy for centuries in Chinese cooking. Um, in the last few years, it's really exploded in Singapore and it's finally made its way over to the UK shores as well. We've started to see it popping up on restaurant menus here. And we think this is a trend that's worth exploring. I don't know much about them. So there's a few different ways that you can salt an egg. Uh, one of the most popular methods is to leave an egg in brine 30 to 50 days. It is creamy and rich, but in a chalky, drying way. I'm not sure if I would typically want to eat it just like that, but I understand it as being something that is either added as a finishing touch, as a seasoning, or put into a sauce. Would you like to taste it in situ? Yes. O-M-G. <laughs> right, Evers, what we've got for you is a salted egg yolk fried lobster. Quite indulgent, I'd have to say. Uh, it's a, it's a lobster fried in a corn flour batter. It's light, it's decadent. But then we've also paired that with a sauce made from butter, garlic, curry leaves, bird's eye chilies, evaporated milk, mashed salted egg yolks. And we think it's gonna pair perfectly. I mean, this, this probably is very much at the higher end of where you might find the salted duck egg yolks. You've made it sound like that's something you just rustled up. Well, do you know what, Baz? I got in five minutes earlier than you, and I put that time to good use. <laughs> so the yolks that we've got on the board there are ones that we've made using a, a quicker method, which is salting them. So they are literally cased in salt for a couple of days, and that produces a similar result, but not quite as extensive as the 30 to 50 day brining method. The sauce itself still has that almost chalky richness. I almost associate it to, in a completely different sphere, a satay sauce, like a peanut sauce. It has that like cloyingness, which is really rich, and then you've got all the spice. But with the word that we overuse all the time, packs of umami. Mm. Oh, he said it, he said umami. Oh my goodness, it's actually on a bed of noodles as well. I hadn't even got that far. So in the last few years, we've started to see salted duck egg yolks being used in all manner of different dishes. Ice cream, patisserie, these things have started to become really popular in Singapore and they're starting to move over to the UK now. And I'm really excited to see where chefs uh -um, can start to use ingredients like the salted duck egg yolks to improve dishes that you would never expect to find it in. So Ebers, how much do you think we paid for six whole salted duck eggs? It's a relatively easy process, but it's a timely process, and the point is you then preserve it so it has a longer shelf life, so therefore, £18 for six, yeah. £5.99. pence. Oh, bargain. Wow. So it's a pound an egg? Pound an egg. I mean, its application, you wouldn't compare it to an egg egg, and a little bit goes quite a long way. That's great. OK, Evers, well, I, I guess the question everyone at home is asking is, salted duck eggs, does it cure your need for something new and trendy, or does it just leave you feeling salty? Brilliant. Oh, Great one, good mate. one. Nice. Absolutely cures my need. This is wonderful. I want more of it in my life. All right, Jay, this is something I've picked that I think will be right up your gullet. Lift the cloche. I think I'm already on this trend. <laughs> Meat. <laughs> Meat. Yeah. Pork. Correct. Steaks. Correct. We're talking about craft meat here. These are two pork shoulder steaks from The Ethical Butcher. The Ethical Butcher is changing how animals and humans coexist in the food chain and how we view our place in nature. They claim that their farmers honor natural systems and farm in ways that increase biodiversity and regenerate land, having a positive impact on the British countryside. 
They believe that all farming should be like this, so a proportion of their profits are channeled into training more farmers in regenerative technique. The Ethical Butcher started by launching on Crowdcube, the platform, um, and they raised over £1.2 million with 777 investors, each having now a share in the company. It's a really interesting concept because I like to eat meat. I also know that eating meat isn't the best thing for the planet, but I do like to do it. And so therefore when I do do it, I wanna make sure that it's being done in the right way and it's not constantly contributing to negative impacts. So all of their producers have to adhere to a strict standard of ethics that the ethical butcher have drafted due to their belief that there is a general lack of existing reliable quality assurance in the meat industry. Now you know a little bit more about them, do you want to eat some of the food that we got from them? That is the most stupid question you've ever asked. So what you have there is a Red Duroc pig ribeye steak from Dingley Dell Farm. Amazing. And you also have a supermarket pork shoulder steak, so the same thing um, as an equivalent. Now these have um, a mango barbecue glaze and are cooked slightly pink. And the reason for that is just to show that you don't need to cook good quality pork all the way. Um, so we got four steaks from the supermarket, which equated to two steaks from the Ethical Butcher. Size is one thing, but yeah, the marbling is very, very different, isn't it? It just, that looks like a much nicer cut. Standout difference is the colour as well, and a lot of that comes with the ageing. Yeah. So the Ethical Butcher is dry aged as well. So you've kind of got a more intense flavour. Whenever we talk about veganism and we talk about meat, one of the biggest arguments that comes up, apart from the ethics of butchering animals, is how meat production is adding to the climate emergency that we're in. And so if there is a way to have the best of both worlds, that's quite interesting. I think it's interesting when you realise it's impossible to have the best of both worlds. You have to attack it from both sides. We have to reduce the amount of meat that we're consuming. And in parallel, the meat we do eat should be more regenerative. The eating experience between those two steaks is remarkably different. A, the Ethical Butcher steak is so much sweeter. The texture of them, it has different textures as you bite into it. Mm -hmm. So I already use online butchers when I'm barbecuing because for me that's spectacle food and I want the best quality that I can find and afford. I still add meat into our weekly online shop for so everyday purposes. And I know that that's going to have to change. We're gonna to have to switch the ratio of what we can afford and how much meat we eat. We'll have to switch. So let's talk price. Give you an equivalent, the supermarket equivalent, four steaks, 420 grams, two pounds 27. For the same weight, how much do you think I paid for the Ethical Butcher Steaks? Five pounds? 11 pounds 80. Okay, I was a little bit off. It is a lot more. And that is out of reach to a lot of people. It is worth the money, but it's a complete mindset shift in terms of how much money we should be expecting to pay for good quality produce. Well, there's obviously one question that we, we are all asking. Mm. And that is, ethical craft meat, the new revolution or not the solution? Oh. Yeah, that is the question I was thinking actually, yeah. I'd like to think it's the revolution. I, I hope think, it is. I think we're a long way off a solution though. Mike, now, you're in the seat, please lift the cloche. It's milk, but it doesn't look like cow milk. Oh, really? It's got little bits. Ooh, okay. It looks like coconut milk. What is the trend? After five or 10 years of alternative milks, is the new food trend milk? Milk is trending at the moment. You can milk a lot of things that aren't mammals, but this is from a mammal, just not one you'd expect. I think you should stress when you say milking things that aren't mammals, you're referring to plant-based things yeah, as opposed you know to I mean. milking fish and reptiles and yeah, birds. That would be yeah. weird. <laughs> Have you tried it? <laughs> should I PA your misery? Yeah. This is camel milk by Desert Farms. Interesting. In my head, it's slightly watered down because of the humps. 
Must come straight through, mustn't it? <coughs> you don't <laughs> milk the hump. Is that how it works? Oh, I don't thought they were the two big milk. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> from the top, they the two. <laughs> Hailed by ancient wisdom and powered by healthy camels, camel milk gives us modern folks the nutrients and vitamins we need. Every bottle is packed with the nutrients that love you right back. It absolutely is the world's most wholesome dairy beverage. Bold words from Desert Farms. Um, it's very heavily marketed around sort of like the uh, nutritional angle. So, you know, excellent sources of calcium, vitamin D, potassium, no hormones, no antibiotics, the most nutrient dense milk on the planet. So it's slightly lower in saturated fat, 10 times more vitamin C and more calcium and potassium than cow's milk. If you'd have told me, Mike, here's a glass, this is full of camel's milk, drink it, I'd go, ooh. I expect it mm -hmm. to taste funkier mm -hmm. than cow's milk. Is it because all camels you've seen are super funky? They do walk like. They've <laughs> got the groove, haven't they? I wasn't aware that Holland had a plethora of camels. Or desert. Or desert. Yeah, so these are, these are farmed camels um, from the hills of Switzerland to Spain, Holland, all over. Not quite what you'd expect from camels. Well, as a glass, it tastes very nice. Do you want to eat the milk instead of drinking it? I've got a dessert for you. Yes, I do. Oh, he's got a good crack. There you go. Oh, he's got a lovely crack. Look at that. So what you've got there is a baked creme brulee pudding. Whoa. It's, it's, it's enough there to serve four. At least. Okay. Please. <laughs> Whoa. Rice pudding, creme brulee. Hello. What is it on top, Barry? Is it camel milk? That's quite good. I got him. I got him. Right. Cheers. 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 Right, it's unbelievable. Yummy, yummy, yum. Most important thing to deduce is that you can't taste the camel milk in that. So, a passion for uh, camel milk began in Saudi Arabia, where the founder, Walid, was visiting his family in his hometown of uh, Jeddah, uh, looking for raw milk. Um, and it was only when uh, somebody approached him with a plastic bag of raw camel milk um, did he realise this was a thing. Um, and then he worked out a way of taking it to the masses by starting to bottle it. And only recently has it made its way over to Europe, where they're now being farmed across Europe uh, and frozen on site and in front of you now. I guess a camel in the desert struggles to get a strong and complete diet, but they are kind of mm -hmm. built evolutionary for that. Whereas you give them lush grass in the Swiss hills, we know that the Swiss dairy is great for that very reason. Mm -hmm. Well, the hills are alive, aren't they? <laughs> Literally the, the sound, sound of camels. Of camels. <laughs> <laughs> it is extremely expensive uh, to harvest a camel. Um, it's 50, 50 times costlier. Harvest a camel. <laughs> is that, is that <laughs> harvesting? It's really expensive, about 50 times more expensive than milking a cow. This is interesting because I was going to ask, but it says on the bottle, a great alternative for those who may be allergic to cow's or goat's milk. I wonder what it's like in a cup of tea. That's a key question to whether I'd buy this or not. Let's talk about cost. So yes. for a 500 ml bottle of cow milk, it's 65p. This is 500 ml. Don't forget to milk a camel. It's 50 times more expensive than it is to milk a cow. Four pounds? It's 11 pounds 50. These guys say that they provide a sustainable source of income for small family farmers, which is a good thing. Who am I to argue what this is priced at if that's what they're doing? It's first off. However, at that price, I would not buy that. So camel milk, is this the new Milky Way or is it not worth the time or day? Ooh. I think camel milk in general is really, really interesting. And if it's as nutritionally beneficial as this particular product, I think, great. So I'm going to say, it's the new Milky Way. Oh. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh my God. What is going on? Prepare for new depths of ineptitude as Pass It On goes live. It sounds like a great idea. On Thursday, August 26th. We stream three live shows across three time zones. Oh, but what is that? And you decide what goes down. That. So wait a minute. We're silly. Where, where do you go with this? More chaos. More panic. No! Same time.
Janice. <laughs> Pass it on live. No, Jamie! When it's live, there's nowhere to hide. Tickets available at Sorted Duck Club. Okay, Baz. Your turn. Oh! Oh, yes. Perfect for today. <laughs> well done, Ebbers. Well done. Is, is this a trend? If it is, I'm ahead of the curve because I've had these in my freezer for quite a while now. What, ice lollies? Alcoholic ice lollies. It's certainly not brand new, but we're seeing more and more of it pop up. This is taking classic, oh, nostalgic foods and turning them into something suitable for grown-ups. In this case, this is We Are Pops. Founded in 2014, so yes, far from brand new, but our goodies for grown-ups are made in Britain with natural premium ingredients and a dash of real alcohol. They also do a Bellini, Prosecco and Peach. They also do gin and tonic, with Gordon's gin. So they have kind of teamed up with Diageo and they've got a number of their brands underneath it, Pims being one of them. Nice. Can you do it at home the same way? So if all goes to plan. Oh. Ooh. Espresso martini? Oh, shut oh, no. up. No way. Negroni? Oh. You've got Negroni? Ebbers has gone got... for a little amaretto sour. Oh. oh. Cheers. Oh. Thanks, Ebbers. Oh, my goodness. That's a really good Negroni. I mean, this tastes actually genuinely delicious. They are actually a similar ABV to these lollies, like between 4 and 5%, we think, and therefore they freeze solid. So they're not as boozy as cocktails, but they've got the same flavours. I enjoy drinking Negroni because I find it really relaxing. It's not about the alcoholic content, it's about the experience. And I'm getting a lot of that experience, but it's colder and it's cooling me down. So as an industry, the alcoholic ice lolly trend, I mean, is there much money in that? Because it wouldn't have occurred to me to be like, wow, that's an amazing business idea. I suppose it depends on if you, you, know, if you have to go out for outside investment, how much of your initial investment gets diluted and do any of your assets get frozen? Uh, these are all kind of considerations. How much lolly you have at the end of it? Exactly. Sorry, Abbas, can you answer the question, please? <laughs> how many bars are there serving cocktails? And how many adults are there buying those? Because I would imagine that's your potential market in a really weird way. I imagine it's huge. Next time I go to uh, the ice cream van, do I have to bring my ID with me? It's a good question. It's a great question. So while we carry on slurping these, let's talk price. Three in a box, how much are you paying? I think a box of three, probably about a fiver. You can have change. £3.50. So £1.60-ish oh, per lolly. Well worth it. Mm. Well worth it. Go on, Ebers, ask him the question yeah. everyone wants We're to know. We're all thinking it, Ebers. Could this be a stunning adult pop or should they just stop? This is an easy one because I do already. I, I take an adult pop every single day. Which means it's over to you guys. Which of those food trends was your favourite? Comment down below. And let us know what the rising food trends are in your area. And we'll select a few oh, for the no, next I episode. Just oh no. <laughs> it's going to start. Ah. Then it's going to go. Ah. No. Then it's going to go. Right, we're yep. rolling on this. Yep. We've all seen it and it's, yep. that was evidence. <laughs> There's your blooper. You're welcome. <laughs>